Little Giant Boxing. What did you think of his performance? Uh, Eddie? I thought it was a perfect fight, really. I think um, he realised he was in with someone who was several levels above where he's boxed before. He took his time. I thought it was a little bit too passive early, too much respect. But then looking back now, he got the stoppage. I love the patience. I love that he didn't panic, you know? And um, I think that he's a, a fantastic talent. You all start, also start looking in the fight and think, hey, he's 22, you know? And then at the same time, tough because he's top 10 of every governing body, he's top three with the WBO. And uh, he's in those big fights. Support was great. It's going to continue to grow here. But, you know, he punches very, very hard. And he's, what the most impressive thing about Diego is, is his accuracy when he has someone hurt. And I thought that was impressive tonight. And once he got his confidence and started to back Caceres up, I thought it was a fantastic performance. I've been beating the drum since, you know, Edgar Belenga joined mm. Matchroom. But I feel like that's. You know, the fight, man, mm. 168 pounds. They're both young. They're, you know, Mexican-Puerto Rican yeah. rivalry. I mean, that's, I love what, what else do you need? I love the fight as well. <clears throat> I mean, you know, and also when you think about it now, I get that, you know, Edgar Belanga, obviously, come on, Dave. Edgar Belanga is going to want big names, if you like. But also, if he's not fighting a big name, you've got a guy here who's top 10 with every governing body, top three with a WBO. So if you're going to pick someone from the rankings... You know, for me, that's a big fight. I do think, I'm not a fan of marinating fights, but that fight is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And it will get to a stage for Edgar where that fight starts to become attractive because one of the things is people are going to look at him and say, do I want to get beat by a young 22-year-old, I can't even say prospect anymore, contender. But I think it's a tremendous fight. Diego, congratulations, man. Just, uh, I was talking to Eddie about it. But I feel like the, the, you know, congratulations on the fight first on the win and everything, but, you know, kind of looking forward, I feel like the Edgar Berlanga fight is kind of, you know, like makes the most sense, right? Mexico versus Puerto Rico rivalry. You guys are both same weight class, top 10. Same promoter. Right? Uh, Eddie, what else do we need? You can ask Eddie. I've been telling him about that fight, man. I mean, that's what I'm in the sport for. That's what I'm here for, to, to take on the big fights and, and really get my name to, to being number one. And to get to number one, I have to take those fights. And... And I feel if you ask me, I'm ready for those fights, you know, but obviously, you know, um, Matchroom and DAZN, they're the best at, at building fighters and, and building superstars. So I trust them and, and, and whatever they think is the next move, I'll, I'll be ready. Last one for me, man, just uh, looking at the fight, Eddie said that maybe you took a little time, a little bit of time, maybe too much respect in the beginning. Just how did the fight play out for yourself? What, what did you think? How did you think? Oh, uh, yeah, I was being a little patient in the beginning. You know, my team told me to, to you know, do what I do, stay calm, uh, control the fight. Uh, not let the crowd get to me here at home, and uh, that's what I try to do. You know, I try to stay patient, uh, try to not let, give them anything, not give them any confidence. And uh, in the middle rounds, you know, I try to pick it up a little bit, and uh, I heard him in that eighth round. And uh, when I came back to the corners, Jose Senior told me he was he was ready to get out of there, but don't get crazy. You know, be smart, and uh, and yeah, I got him out of there in the ninth round. Dio, congrats, congrats on the victory. Obviously impressive. Again, you know, getting a stoppage win. But what match do you have to Edgar Berlanga? Um he knows what it is. I'm here, you know, um, but I really don't care about him, what he has going on. You know, I'm, today was my night and uh, just happy with, with the outcome. What are your thoughts? You know, obviously, you know, headlining here, you know, your hometown, South Central. Uh, it's great. You know, um, like Eddie said, you know, I, I'm probably one of the only fighters who was able to headline this year in three different countries, uh, UK, Mexico, and out here in LA in my hometown. And uh, just happy with the support, happy with uh, how everything's been going, and just excited for for, for the future. Obviously, yeah, you know, how would you adjust? Obviously, I mean, how would you judge? Obviously, you were with with Eddie, you know, from the from day one when he flew you out to Chicago, where you signed that deal. Mm -hmm. What's how's that relationship between you two, and you know, what's the, what does the future bring for you? Um, it's great. You know, I mean, they've uh, I'm extremely grateful for for the opportunities they've given me since I was 17. You know, I remember you were the first person to ever interview me there when I when I when he brought me out mm -hmm. to Chicago. And, um, and yeah, man, it's just been a, a great journey. I can't believe it's been five years already, but uh, but yeah, ex extremely extremely happy with how things are going. You know, now I'm 20 and 0, and I'm uh, a future star in the in boxing. Diego, what do you think about that Jaime Munguia fight in the future? Uh, it's like another great fight. You know, there's a lot of amazing fights uh, to be made in the future. You know, uh, Jaime Munguia, another great fighter. You know, if you ask me, I feel I beat him. Um, the same way I just did with Coseres, um, you know, and any other guy you name, you know, I think I'd come out on top. You know, I feel I'm really a special fighter, and, um, you know, little by little, you guys will see it. You know, this is another uh, step-up fight, and uh, I rose to the occasion and, and got him, got the job done. I'm going to go, I was going to say, Diego, you call in Gallegos now, Placetas, 
What does it say about your level of opposition that you've really stepped up every, after every fight? Well, you know, every fight you guys see I'm getting better. You know, I'm obviously getting older. I'm getting smarter. Um, you know, with the experience is, is coming. My mass strength is kicking in. You know, all the all the good things. So, um, you know, I just want to keep showing the, the boxing world that uh, I'm, I'm keeping the same level of performance. Even though the opposition is going up, you know, I'm only going to keep getting better with, with the fights, with the experience. And, uh, and yeah, man, just, um, you know, Diego Pacheco's time is here. How much yeah. confidence do you get sparring David Benavides on a regular basis? Um, good confidence, you know, David, you know, we always work, you know, we've been working for about three years now. You know, I've been part of all of his camps, except for this one, you know, because Andrade is a southpaw. But um, but extremely happy, you know. I'm in the gym with him every day. Um, you know, I learn a lot from him, and and we're always trying to help each other get better. And uh, and yeah, man, just I'm just looking forward to to keep learning and, and keep getting better because I'm always a student of the game. And uh, and yeah, man, I know there's always room for improvement. Eddie, what's up, Pat, to uh, make Diego Pacheco a superstar in boxing? I think he's in a perfect um, strategy, perfect line. You know, I think building nicely here. That was his first fight in in Los Angeles. We had a good crowd tonight room for improvement and, and room just to keep pushing him forward. He's never going to be a guy that's going to roll out of nightclubs and start screaming and shouting at everyone. So the great news is, is you've got a good role model here for, for the kids from, from South Central and Los Angeles. But you've got a young American fighter, you know, Hispanic background, Mexican background, who can really fight, who can punch and who is only 22 years old. So you know, part of me don't want to get it wrong. You know, I, I still feel like there's improvements that need to be made. He knows that, but he's only going to get better. And it's frightening to think that at 22, he could have another three fights before he starts thinking about world championships. And the improvements that he's going to make in 2024, you know, he's already top 10 with every governing body, top three with a WBO. And sometimes, you know, when Canelo Alvarez moves up or doesn't fight a mandatory, options to fight for a world title become available. So we've got to be ready for that in 2024. For me, it's more like 2025. But next year, I love the names that we mentioned, you know, Munguia, uh, Edgar Belenga, those places, you know, they fill out venues much bigger than this, obviously. You know, a fight with Jaime Munguia, for example, is a massive fight in Los Angeles. Diego, ¿qué mensaje tienes a Munguia si ves este mensaje en español? No, pues respeto para él, es un peleador muy bueno, pero aquí vengo yo también, Diego Pacheco, vengo a hacer mi historia y y vengo a pelear con los mejores, o acá ahí va a llegar el turno para pa enfrentarnos nosotros. ¿Será una pelea, una pelea clásica, no? Su centro contra Tijuana. No, o sea, una pelea de que, que yo estoy seguro será una de las mejores de este tiempo y, y yo estoy listo, yo estoy listo cuando mi promotor me diga que se va a hacer la pelea y voy a estar para responder. Eddie, ¿would that be easier for to make uh, the fight against McGee against Yeah, the, the problem is, like I said, yeah, a lot of these guys, Edgar, Jaime, they're looking at the big names in the division because they've built up their record now and they want to gamble in big fights for big money. So if I was them, I'd probably be looking at Diego Pacheco going, oh, 22, it's a tough fight. He's not a massive name yet. It's high risk, low reward, yeah? But then if you're gonna pick a guy from the top 10 and, it's not a, and you're not in a massive fight, then if you're not picking Diego Pacheco, you really just don't want to fight him. Do you know what I mean? So I think it's best for us not to start calling people out, not to start upsetting people or ruffling feathers, just going about our business nice and quietly, well, loudly from me, but quietly from, from Diego, and just continuously. I think next opponent should be someone that you guys and the fans go, wow, woof. He's, he's, you know, he's making his step in the, the top 15 now. And you know, I think tonight was the perfect bit of matchmaking. And I, and I think Caceres, you know, he, he he really prepared well for the fight. He had a lot of notice for that fight, and he came to win. You know, in the end, he had the, the heart punched out of him because he just he didn't want to take any more punishment. But you know, in those middle rounds, he got caught too much, and that was nice to see him getting hit. Not nice, but in a way nice by, by a, a guy that can punch a little bit because you can't afford to do that as you step up the level. So for me, the perfect opponent, perfect learning uh, fight as well, and, and in the end, the perfect performance and finish. Any um, YouTube theater, great crowd, uh, would you like to bring Diego?